Cane jams are a waste of time. I know that's the title of this video. Um, it's not so much um, that I agree with that. It's also not so much that I disagree with that. I think this was just a very fun topic to talk about in this week's video. I didn't have anything uh, devlog worthy because I've been working hard on Regulator City, the game I've been working on for the last year. Check uh, the Steam wishlist link in the description and please wishlist it. Um, I just did a lot of work on that game this week, but nothing that I can show you on this video or interesting to show you. So I needed a topic for this video. And for that, I asked the wisdom of the Discord server and uh, they came up with a bunch of ideas. Most of them not, <clears throat> not really that good. Uh, but this one was interesting. Uh, game jams are a waste of time. Now, it's an interesting statement. Um, I'm partly agreeing with that because there are very good reasons not to do game jams. Uh, but there are also a lot of good reasons to do game jams. I've done a couple myself in the past and some of those games or one or two, that one of those games was Groundskeeper. And although that game jam version never made it anywhere, I did release Groundskeeper 2 and it got released on iPhone, Android, PC. It's coming to Switch right now as you're watching this. This week, I think actually Groundskeeper 2 is launching on the Switch. Originally a game jam game, a very tiny a core gameplay, but a lot of fun. So let's just talk about some pros, but also cons for doing game jam games. Game jam games. And um, yeah, marmalade games. After the intro. All right, for those that don't know what a game jam is, let's start at the beginning. A game jam is pretty much um, mostly, usually a weekend, three days, two days, three days, uh, sometimes a week and very rarely a month, but a very short time limit. And like I said, usually a weekend of creating a game. You get to hear the theme of the game on Friday, which is often just a certain word, sometimes a phrase. And based on that, that just that alone, you start creating a game and you only have like 48 or 72 hours to make it. It's crazy, I know. And that's pretty much a game jam. Uh, within that time limit, create a game from scratch based on that theme or that phrase or whatever it is that the game jam is about. And that's a very interesting concept. Now I've written down three positive reasons to do game jams and three um, slightly negative things and it's from game, slightly negative, not extremely negative, but it, it, those can be seen as reasons to not do game jams. Let's start with the pros because we're gonna start very positive so that we can really crash down into the negative. You can also skip ahead, watch the negative first and then come back for the positive if that's what you like. That I can, I can understand that, but I'm gonna start with the positive. You learn to develop games. That's the first positive thing about game jams. Um, the short cycles, just having a weekend to create a game, you actually learn a lot of game development. You'll also learn your own skills and what your limitations are. You'll learn how to expand on those limitations because the first game jam, you might create or start creating a game that doesn't get finished within the time limit. The next time you'll have a better grasp on how much time you actually have to work on certain areas of a game. So um, you learn a lot of um, good stuff. You learn to create new things. You create within themes that maybe you normally wouldn't think about. So that's a very positive thing to create games. You learn a lot about making games. You will also learn, um, this links a bit to the first one, to uh, optimize your workflow. Because there's such a strict deadline of only three days to create a game, which is mentally crazy, insane, stupid, but it does give you a certain limitation that you have to work with it. And even the bigger game, the AAA games, the, the big indie games, all those games have a certain deadline and time limit because you can't keep working on games endlessly. At some point it has to be done, especially if it's your full-time job. Games simply cost money to be made, so you need to know what you can do within a certain time frame and how to optimize your whole workflow. And of course, uh, step one, learning about creating games. The more you learn, the more knowledge you have about creating certain things in games, the faster you can create games in the future. Um, learning that workflow and how to plan ahead and how to scope a project, that's a very good skill to have. You know what you want to create and what you can create within that time frame, And then you have to just plan it out so that you're on day two or day three, you actually are done with the project and not only halfway in or you did all the work on making your main character run around but you have no levels or worlds to run around in. 
management, all that stuff. Great to learn in game jams. The third one is um, limitations. Um, not just time limitations, but there is also a theme. You have to limit your whole game design and your whole thought process within such a theme. Now, this is something that most game jam games uh, fail, I think. Uh, personally, if I look at a lot of games, um, they often fail in this theme. It's very hard. Game design isn't just creating uh, or recreating games. It's coming up with interesting ideas and preferably within a game jam to fit in a certain theme. Like limited amount of time, a limited amount of stuff you can do. And of course, working within a certain strict theme is a great thing to have because especially if you're gonna find a job in the game industry, uh, other people will be telling you what to create and you just have to create it. You won't be your own boss. You'll have producers, game designers, uh, artists, and they will all come up with ideas that you have to implement as a game developer. Or maybe you are the artist, but then you will have a producer above you telling you what to do while he sits behind the desk and talking to other people. Anyway, those type of guys, don't trust them. But um, limitations and things like that are very good to learn as well within a game jam, especially if you're doing a game jam with a team. Um, just the whole team process is great to learn with the pressure of the deadline looming around you and you all have to uh, work together to make this product. Pretty cool skill to learn about. And especially in a game jam, if it fails, you only wasted a weekend or three days, four days, maybe a week. If it works out, you just learned a bunch of things that you can take on to your next game project. And those are the three very positive things from game jams. Now there are probably a lot of other positive things you can come up with. I'm sure I could come up with them if I sit longer, but I just wanted to cover three main things. Um, and also want to dive into the three negative things about game jams and let the fun begin. All right, so the first uh, negative part of game jams. Let me see, what did I write down? Don't learn to complete a game. Yeah, uh, the biggest thing, um, game jams, the strict time limit, a lot of people start game jams, but uh, not everybody gets or makes it to the finish line. Um, it's hard. Completing games is extremely hard. Game jam games usually aren't completed products. They're uh, partly completed. They uh, have the core stuff, the basics, pretty much the prototype stage of a game. Um, it shows you what can be done, where the fun could be. And then usually you build it out with extra content, assets, uh, little changes on the core game mechanics, all that stuff. You don't learn those things in a game jam. That's, uh, I think, the biggest negative. A lot of people know how to start game projects. Not a lot of people know how to finish them. Second negative thing is you don't learn polishing. Um, Polishing is everything that makes a game uh, a shiny product, I guess. Polishing, shiny, it all links together. What I mean is adding a user-friendly stuff um, from tutorials, which is a lot of work to get those right and into a game, but they help a player get into your game and understand it. But also screen transitions from menu to menu, um, spicing up your menu, not having it just drawn on screen, but maybe slide it in screen, maybe have some animation playing around it, uh, some cool backgrounds that maybe change, uh, all those type of things. Um, special effects, um, it's great to have your character jump, but a little poof of smoke or a little twinkle if he lands whatever those type of extra polishing things usually you don't have the time to do those in a game jam game um, it's also not worth it to spend your time on those type of things because the game jam has a deadline you need to get your game done but uh, for commercial games or releasing games into the public you want to have the best experience for the player and polishing is uh, extremely important for those things and you don't learn that in game jams you really need to pick your game jam game and then after jam ends you have to start polishing it and uh, see if you can actually wrap it up into a full package that players can really get into and would actually pay money for the final thing is um this goes a little bit against the positive thing of of learning to work within a theme and all that stuff uh, because a lot of game jam games um, because of the tight deadline people just stick to the stuff they know so you're not learning new skills you're not learning new genres or a lot of game jam games will end up being a platformer that just happens to have the theme as a story or environment around it but it's still a platforming game um, 
try to do a top-down, uh, maybe a role-playing game, maybe a turn-based game, maybe a chess game, a racing game. You rather not go there because you have no experience with those things and you know you can't learn it in two or three days. So you stick with what you know. And that's, um, I think, the biggest negative of doing Game Jam games. You pretty much end up with the same game, just a different setting, a different theme, but at the core, it's a platformer. And maybe uh, if it's uh, if the theme is uh, no more time, it's a platformer that you can only play for 10 seconds, but still a platformer. Or maybe if the theme is, um, I think the last Ludum Dare was for the inevitable. So maybe a platform game where the platforms are slowly dissolving and you just have to, um, you're pretty much jumping from platform to platform until the last platform is gone. It's still a platform game. It fits the theme, but it's still the same game. Um, and I've seen that a lot of times that people participate in a game jam game and all they deliver is pretty much the same game as they did before, but different graphics. The feel is a little bit different, but at the core, the game mechanics are pretty much the same. And that's a downside of doing game jam games. Now that's probably the limitation of the time limit. If you had more time, you could probably do um, different things and really go for it. But um, at some point you're pretty much doing prototyping instead of game jams. And I think prototyping gives you a lot more uh, freedom to uh, explore new things and just try to work on stuff and see if you can actually make it work technically. And if you can, you can build it into a full game. So um, three positive, three negatives. Let's just wrap this up with a little conclusion and some good examples of game jam games. All right, so the end verdict on game jams. Do we actually like them or are they a waste of time? I have no verdict on it. Honestly, it's up to everybody. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff you can learn, especially if you're new to game development. There's just a huge amount of things you can learn doing a game jam, especially doing it with others, but also if you're doing it alone. Um, so much stuff you can learn from it. I just don't think personally you should be only doing these jams. I think you should actually um, or create a game jam game and then take it and push it into more. Learn how to complete it, learn how to polish it, learn how to actually release it and everything that adds, that adds on that like the business stuff, store pages, you name it. There's so much stuff you could learn from that as well outside a game jam. Um, for me personally, if I had more time, I would do these game jams, but I've been moving from project to project. Um, every now and then I have time to prototype something, but I have a lot of bunch of ideas in my head already. I don't really need a game jam to come up with new ideas. I have a bunch of interesting things uh, written down everywhere. And by the time I release my new game, I will have a bunch of new ideas left and ready to go. So. I'm already working on two games right now and on my Saturdays I'm working on a prototype with somebody else who does the art and the rest of the week I'm working on Regulator City. I wish I had time for game jams. I think they're great to do. I just don't think you should only do game jams, but that's up to everybody else. To, to wrap this video up on an extremely positive note, there are some great examples of game jam games out there that made it into full products and that made huge amounts of money. Of course, these are the exception to the rule. Don't take these games as an example, like this could happen to my Game Jam game. No, it probably won't. There are thousands of Game Jam games done every year. And I had a hard time digging out some of the big ones. I mean, there are dozens more, but uh, still, there are only a few that make it. So a uh, couple of great examples I digged up and excuse and, and and again sorry if this if i was misinformed but from what i can tell these games are some cool examples of game jam games um super hot which is just an interesting concept altogether um i think this could only come out of a game jam or some weird of prototype that wasn't commercially uh, created because um, it's just interesting to do and different all right, Hollow Knight is a interesting example of a game jam game. From what I understand, it started by two guys doing game jams together and it came from that. It's a platformer. Like I just said, it's a platformer that probably fitted the theme or something, but it is a platformer. Still, it did extremely well, so well done. Uh, final example, um, Binding of Isaac. From what I understand, it was also part of a week-long game jam thing. Um, 
I think that one did pretty well also. And it's not really out there. There are probably a lot more um, experimental type games that came out of it. But these are some good examples that are both experimental for a game jam, but not too experimental that they would somehow not fit a commercial released game in full blown uh, polish and everything around it. And there are a lot more examples out there, so uh, make sure to check those out. And um, thanks to the Discord channel for coming up with some interesting video topics, but especially this topic, because it allowed me to do this video. And that means um, end of the video, well done. Like, subscribe, comment below. And if you have more ideas for controversial, maybe, or interesting topics for these videos, drop them in the comments below or come say hi on the Discord. Every now and then I'll be in panic mode on a Friday morning because I usually record these videos on Friday. But if I have no idea, you guys need to help me out. So um, that's what the Discord is for. You're there to help me create these videos. I think I just lost a lot of uh, people on the Discord. You're also there because I like you. I, I really appreciate you guys. Don't leave. I think I better end this video here. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye, you on the Discord still there? Anybody? Hello? Anybody?